We're now going to create our generate endpoint for our application, which is going to allow us to submit a URL to this endpoint. It's going to generate a link if the link doesn't already exist, and it's going to return us the full URL and the code as well. So I'm actually going to change this to forward slash API forward slash generate just so it's a little bit more appropriate. Uh, we don't want to mix this in with any of the other URLs that we've already created here. So we need to use a REST client and I'm using Pour for Mac, which is a really good REST client. Um, it's just super easy to use, but there are other alternatives if you want to go ahead and Google it and just have a look at what's going to be uh, good for you. But generally the concept is the same, so you should be able to follow along in the same way. So what we need to do is we need to create a new request to uh, some endpoint, and I'm going to call this generate, like so. Now we're sending a post request, remember, here to this API generate URL. So inside of Pour, I'm going to paste the full URL of my application, just in there, and then I'm going to say API generate. Now what we can do, and if you're not using Pour, uh, you can ignore this part, but you can do it in other REST clients, is I can set uh, environment variables. So for example, I could set the host to this, um, and then I could hit done, and I could type host here, and then do that, and it would work in exactly the same way. So what we can do now is actually send the request through. And you notice we get a 200 OK. So that's the HTTP code 200. Everything's gone fine. We don't have any response from this endpoint. And that's because we don't have any code in here. If, for example, we were to echo out hello and we were to run that request again, you can see that we're under the web view. We get hello here, but we don't want to do that. We want to only send back JSON, which means that it can be read uh, within another language. So for example, if you're accessing this endpoint from within another PHP application or another uh, backend application, it will work or even JavaScript. And then you can parse that JSON and use that as you need. So we're only going to be outputting JSON here. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Like how do we even get started? Well, what we want to do is pull in the request body and the request body is going to look like this. If you come under the body tab, if you are using port or any other client, we can start to write JSON in here. So I'm going to say URL and then I'm going to say, say cocourse.com. I'm going to hit this. That's going to take this URL. It's going to look it up in the database. If it does exist, it's going to return us a response with the full shortened URL. And if it does already exist, it will do the same, but just pull that from the database. So it, either way, it will create a record or it will return the same record. But if we don't have this, we want to give an error, or if the URL is invalid, we also want to give an error. So let's focus on that first. But obviously the first thing we need to do is actually pull in this payload. And by payload, I mean the load of data that's sent from our client to our server. So I'm gonna create a payload variable, and we need to JSON decode something, and that is the body of the request. So we can say app request get body, simple as that. So let's do a var dump on payload. And all that means is when we send a request here, we get back an object with that URL in there. So this is, remember, our application. And this is what we're sending through to our, uh, through to our application. So we can now use payload URL like that. If we send it through again, we see a string cocourse.com. So from this payload, the first thing we want to do is check, does the URL actually exist in here? Because without a URL, we can't shorten. So we're gonna check if empty payload URL. And I guess we could also trim this as well, just to make sure. You can obviously add any validation or modify this validation. Uh, it's entirely up to you. So if that does happen, we want to respond with an error code. So we want to say app, response set status 400 that's a bad request so 400 means bad request so let's check this out in here if we get rid of this 
and send that through, we get a 500 internal error. Oh, I see trying to get property of non-object. Let's check this out. So if we say empty payload or the URL is empty, then we just see 400 bad requests there and we uh, under the headers, we can see everything here, but we don't actually have a response. So we need to deal with the actual response now. So to do this, uh, again, we use slim to write a response here. And inside of here, this needs to be a JSON encoded array. Pull this in. And what we want to do is output error and another array in here. We're going to say code and we're going to choose a code for this so we can say anything 10,000 or 1,000. A message will just say something like a URL is required. So now what we get is when we don't send that through, if you head over to the sort of JSON view of this, you'll see that as well as the 400 bad requests, we also have the error information. So whoever's using this API endpoint knows what is wrong. So that's our first check. We are going to re uh, refactor this because we're going to be duplicating a lot of code. We're going to be working with presenters. But for now, we'll just uh, run along with this and we'll refactor that in the next video. So the next thing we need to do is check if the given URL is valid. So to do this, we're going to say if not filter var. So if filter var, whatever we're doing with it, returns false. And we're doing, or we're checking payload URL, and we're checking for a valid URL. Now, of course, you can use any method to validate the URL. Uh, filter var is a very basic one, but uh, this will accept things like FTP. It will accept things like uh, localhost. So it really depends on how uh, much control you want. But you can feel free to update this. So if this does return false, it means we don't have a valid URL. So we're going to set the response code again which is 400. I'm going to do pretty much the same thing here. So for now, I'm just going to copy and paste this down. You can see we're duplicating a lot of code here. I'm going to change the error code and just stick a one on the end. And I'm going to say a valid URL is required. So by sending this through with no URL, we see a URL is required. But now if we do send through a URL, we can send an empty URL as well. And we get the same response. If we send a load of rubbish through, we get a valid URL is required. And we have a unique error code for that as well. So after this, everything's fine. You can run more checks if you want, but after this, because we're returning from this function, uh, this won't carry on uh, until uh, we pass both these checks. So what we want to do now is attempt to look up an already existing URL. So if I say link equals link where, and we did this earlier, so we know how this works, payload URL, and then we'll grab the first record. So we don't actually have link imported. So again, at the top, let's say use shorty models link. And this now should contain um, the point at which we've found a URL or we've not found a URL. So what we can do is we can say if link, that means that we have found a link, we've found the link. So we want to return current code. So that's if I was to type in DuckDuckGo, it would just return this code to us. Otherwise, what we would do is we would create a new record. So let's deal with this first of all. So we want to set the status uh, to 201, which is created. Obviously, we're not actually creating anything, but it gives the illusion that we are creating a record. So let's just run this and test this out. So let's type in duckduckgo.com. There we go. So we get a 201 created. We don't have any response body just yet, but we can go ahead and set that now. So what we want to do in here then is we want to present to the user the URL that they've given just in case they need it. Um, we want to present to them the generated URL and then the code itself, just in case they need that separately. You can obviously update this and do what you want. So we have pretty much the same thing again here. We're just copying and pasting this code, but this time we don't want an error. We want to say 
URL. We're just going to give them back the, the URL that they passed in. So that is payload URL. And here I'm going to create a generated section to this. And that is going to contain the URL, the full URL. And it's going to contain the code from that link. So the code is easy. We can just say link code. Uh, the URL is slightly more difficult, so we'll tackle that in just a minute. So if I uh, send this request again, you can see here that we get the URL that the user sent through generated. We're not giving a generated URL at the moment, but we are giving the code back from the API. So we need to tackle this URL part here then. So what we need to do is from app, we can grab our uh, base URL that we set earlier. And that is just here. So that's the full URL. All we need to do is stick the code on the end then. So to do that, we just say app config base URL. We append on a forward slash because we remember we removed the trailing slash here. And then we append on link code. And that's it. So when I refresh now, not only do we get the URL and the code, we get the full URL as well. So imagine someone coming to your API and saying, right, I want to generate a short URL for this. They get back, they get a URL, which I guess is pointless, but it just shows that we can output this. They get the generated object here with the URL in, which they can then use to do whatever they want with. And then that will, when we visit this, that will redirect them. So this whole thing here, if we just paste it into our browser we'll redirect them off to DuckDuckGo. So we're now at the point where we have returned if something already exists, but what if it doesn't already exist? We need to create a new link record. So let's create a new link variable, and this is going to be link create. This is all part of Eloquent. We pass in an array of the properties or the column names that we want to store. In this case, it's just the URL at the moment because we're going to be generating the code after this has been created because we need to generate it from the unique ID in the table. So this is just payload URL. We don't need to sanitize this because it's already done all within Eloquent for us. And now what we want to do is update the code. So all this will do is insert a new record, which we don't just want, we want the code. That's the most important part. So we're gonna say new link update and we're updating the code here. So we're updating this part of it. So the first command is going, or the first uh, line of code here is going to create a new record without the code. And then the second part here is gonna update that code. Now to update that code, we're gonna use the new link ID, but we're going to uh, convert the base from 10, which is obviously just the decimal system, to base 36. And this will give us a unique code every time because we know that our IDs are never going to be the same. They increment from one up to whatever number. So we're always going to be generating a unique, uh, unique code here. But there is a slight issue with this and we'll see what that is in just a moment. So let's wrap this in base convert. Uh, it's already given us that helper there. We want to convert this number from base 10, so just our decimal system, to base 36. And it's as simple as that. And what we now want to do is return to the user that something has been created. So we want to return app response right. And we do exactly the same as we've done here. So let's just pull that in, paste that in there. And all this is now is new link code and new link code like that. That's pretty much it. So let's run this and see what happens. Let's choose a different URL. So let's go for google.co.uk. Let's send this request through. And there we go. We get google.co.uk, the URL. Now notice that we have code two. Now this isn't necessarily an issue. If you were to build this and, and host it somewhere and people were to start submitting uh, their app, or their URLs through to your app, uh, this is still a unique code. The problem here is that converting two from base 10 to base um, 36 
is that it still stays at two. There's a way that you can remedy this if you want to. You can always append additional characters on, but that's going to leave you with really ugly uh, codes. What you can do is let's just delete this record. And let's go to our table info here and let's change our auto increment to 100,000, for example. So what's going to happen now is when we create a new record, the ID is going to be at 100,000 now rather than one, two, three, four, five. So all this is going to do is it's going to convert 100,000 from base 10 to base 36, and we will get a slightly better code. So let's run this again. And there we go. So we get 255S. So as you get more URLs in your application, this will grow. And I think this is actually a good thing. If you were to start at one, your, your auto increment starting at one, that's a sensible thing to do within a database table. And then a, uh, a user who first submitted would get a very unique URL. They'd get your URL and then forward slash one. And I think that's a good thing. But it's entirely up to you. I wouldn't recommend doing this and setting your auto increment really high. It's uh, it's not an ideal solution really. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this record and I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, change this back to two. So our next record is gonna be created at ID with an ID of two. And I'll let you decide how you're going to handle that. So let's do this once again. And then we, there we go, we get forward slash two. So now that we have allowed ourselves to generate URLs, this looks a little bit messy. So in the next video, we're going to start to refactor this with presenters. You don't need to do this, but here we're duplicating a large chunk of code. Here we're duplicating a large chunk of code and here as well, which means we've had to copy and paste a lot of code. We can't reuse this same response through other routes easily. We're just going to have to come back here and copy and paste it. So we're going to look at how we can use presenters to make this a lot easier and a lot more reusable.